Hey guys, welcome to the Tubal Cruise channel and today we're going to be introducing my new cycling computer. This is the Wahoo Element Bolt. So for those of you who are fans of the channel, you've probably seen my current cycling computer. This is the Garmin Edge 520. This device actually had a huge impact on my cycling a couple years ago when I bought this. But unfortunately, the battery life on this guy is starting to die down and it's cutting it a little bit close on some of my longer rides. So I was in the market for a new cycling computer and I've heard a lot of good things about this from some of my friends here in Japan. They really like the interface and the thing that really hooked me on it was the ability to be able to connect it to your phone and just manage everything a lot easier on your phone and I heard the user interface is a lot better. So I'm really excited to go test it out. There's actually a couple different colors. I think there's the basic gray color with the blue parts on it and there were two limited edition colors available right now. One was the red, one was the yellow. I thought about going with the red to match my BMC but I decided to go with yellow because I'm also a big fan of yellow and this one should be able to match a couple of my other bikes a little bit more nicely. So today we're going to do a quick little unboxing of the Element Bolt. I'll try and keep it short because I'm sure you've seen a couple other Element Bolt unboxing videos and I'll go through some of my first impressions and we're going to go on a nice ride. So let's go ahead and first get started with the unboxing. Starting with the unboxing, we've got a nice, simple, clean box here and just folds open like this and the computer slides out. So even on this boxing, they've got the custom yellow design on the inside and on the computer screen itself, the actual screen is only black and white so there's no color on this. So I guess that helps with prolonging the battery life. Currently on my Garmin, I do get a blue line on certain maps and stuff, but we'll see how this looks without that. So here we go, we've got our main unit here. Let's pull it out, see what it looks like. And the color's only on the back side and in the top part. And this actually has a pretty aero profile here. So this is supposedly the most aero cycling computer. And the mount is actually integrated into that aero design, which is pretty cool to see. And this is just the sticker with how it's supposed to look with the information on there. So we can take that off for now. And I hope this thing has a little bit of charge before we go. So looking in the other items in here, let's see what else we got. We got some zip ties. And this is a stem mount. Probably won't be using that too much. USB cable. And this is the standard mount. So this is the one that we'll probably be using. And unfortunately, my BMC bike has an integrated mount into the stem itself, which is really cool, but it doesn't work with this system. So I need to get a special adapter because the twist mount system is different on the Garmin computers than it is for the Wahoos. This is my first time actually using one of these. So this one starts actually a little bit diagonal. So instead of a full 90 degree angle compared to the Garmin, this one you start a little bit diagonal and then it goes in like this. And the arrow profile of the mount builds in right into the computer itself. Pretty cool. This is the first time I'm actually using this up close in person and touching this. And I really like the yellow. So what else we got in here? This is the important product information and a quick get start guide. Supposedly this is really simple. You just need to download the app and scan the QR code and then you're instantly set and you can do all the settings on your phone. Let's try that out real quick. So let's download this Element app from Wahoo. Install. <laughs> this thing is kicking off with some pretty intense music. Let's skip through that. Allow, allow, allow. Sure. So pair with the phone. I haven't actually turned on the computer yet, so I don't even know how to turn this on. I'm just gonna assume it's like the Garmin and this is the power button here. So yeah, there's the power icon. Let's hold that for a sec. So here we go. I've got the app open and it's turned to this QR code scanner and my computer's on. I actually had to charge it for a little bit, so I had to pause for a little bit and it's fully charged. Let's scan the QR code. Beep. That looks like I gotta create an account. Create account. Email, first name, last name, password, standard stuff. It's also giving me a couple different options to link my accounts. I mostly just use Strava, so let's go ahead with that. And authorize. Bloop. And units. We use metric here in Japan. Height. I am 183. Weight, I'm about 75 kilograms, so that's spot on. Date of birth, 
1994 is the standard. Not quite that young. In case you didn't know, September 3rd, 1989. Feel free to send me a birthday present on September 3rd. And I am male. So actually the default starts at female. Interesting. Everything looks good. Let's save. Enable live track. Yeah, why not? This is pretty interesting. You can automatically generate a live link with your friends and family when you go for a ride. So I can see that being really useful. Like I can send an email to my wife every time I go out automatically and she can know exactly where I am in case something happens. I wouldn't want to share it with everyone on Facebook and Twitter, but that's pretty interesting. So this is just some tutorial introductions so you can zoom in and out to see more or less data on the page. If you zoom in, you see less data fields. If you zoom out, you see more data fields. And there's a lot of customization with this and I'm pretty excited to check it out. I love that it's all controllable here on the smartphone. It was really annoying having to try and customize everything with the old Garmin button interface. I really like having this application here. Garmin might have that on their new application, I'm not sure. And the other cool thing here is that it has the LED lights that you can program to do different things to, for example, show what heart rate zone you're in or what power zone you're in. I'm really excited to test out all this stuff. It's gonna take me a while, I think, to get used to it all, but. And in this application, it looks like I can share my live track link at any time. So if something's happening, or I decide like I need to let someone know where I'm going, I'm trying to meet up with a friend, I can share that link with them in a message or something. So pretty cool, really excited to go check this out on the ride. Size comparison, this is my old Garmin Edge 520. So pretty similar size here on the side as well. The angle definitely looks a bit more aerodynamic with the new Wahoo. And also on the bottom part, you can see the Garmin mount sort of sticks out, whereas the Wahoo is sort of blended in into the cap, so it's got that more aerodynamic design. Anyway, now it's time for the real test. Let's go get out on the road and test this bad boy out. Hey guys, welcome back. We're actually in the future right now. It's a couple weeks later. It might be two or three weeks later since I filmed the first part of this video. Anyway, I've been really busy with work and I wanted to get some more ride time in with the new computer before I gave my first impression. So here we are about a month later and I'm gonna be giving my impressions on the Wahoo Element Bolt, what I think, what's been going good for me, what I really like about the unit, and some little things that I don't like about the unit. And we're gonna be talking about that on my ride home from work right now. As you can see, the sun is setting. It's blaring right in front of me right now. I probably look really bright on the screen. And we're right here by Shonai Park, Shonai River here in Nagoya, Japan. There's actually a little dog park right by where I am right now, and I'm on my way home from work, so let's continue on with the review. Today I'm riding my aluminum road bike and I've got the unit mounted up here. Really glad I went with the yellow color because it just matches all of my bikes. Yellow will match pretty much any bike that you've got. So I've got a green bike, a black bike, a red bike, and the yellow looks good on all of them. So really happy with that color choice. And here we go, the ride is automatically paused right now. So if we actually move a little bit, it'll make a sound. Maybe, <laughs> I'm going too slow. There it goes. And if you stop, auto stop. So this is not a new feature or anything. This is on the Garmin as well, but the sound is uniquely different. And at first it was really strange because I was used to the Garmin sound for a really long time, but now it's grown on me and I really like it. I especially like the sound when you start a new segment. It's really nice. It really gets you going and these lights light up right as the segment's about to start. So it gets you kind of in that mood set, like here we go, we're about to start a race. It's kind of like the start of a Mario Kart race. So I really like that. And I've also got these paired together with my power meter pedals. These are the Favero Asioma uh, Duo. So I made a review video about this a while back. So if you're interested, you can go check that out. Anyway, super easy to synchronize these things. That's one of the things I really like about this computer is that all of the controls can be done on the cell phone. And some people I know don't really like that. Like they like being able to control everything on the device itself. But I'm a big fan of being able to set everything on the cell phone. It's just way easier, super convenient. And I was able to hook up everything, my heart rate monitor and these power meter pedals like instantly. And yeah, just super ease of use. That's one of the first things I noticed and the setup process, it just went by super quick. I didn't really get stuck on anything and I was ready to go within just a few minutes uh, other than having to get the computer charged itself. But in terms of the user interface design, just good job Wahoo, good job. Anyway, let's continue on and I'll keep talking along the ride. I gotta get back before it gets dark. I forgot my light today. So we should be approaching a segment here pretty soon. You'll see the menu for when a segment's approaching. There it is, 100 meters away. Lights are going. Go! 
And I really like the display during these live Strava segments, especially the bottom where you can see the gray color filling in. That's how far along you've gone. So you know how far on the segment you've gone, how far left you have to go. I know normally you can see like how many meters are left, but this just gives you a really nice visual display of how much is actually left. And it also shows you how much time you're behind. And the cool thing here is there's a versus option. So you can change it to versus the KOM or versus your PR. And right now I'm kind of sucking a little bit right now. I'm a minute behind on this KOM, but this is actually one of my target KOMs right now. I'm tied in third place right now, hoping to get it one day. And anyway, continuing along the design here. So there's a main three buttons here, a left, a center, and a right. So I've been mostly talking about things I like so far. One thing I don't really like, but I also like at the same time is these buttons. You can see they're indented a little bit in there and they feel really great on a normal day like today. But if it's raining, I notice the rain can get stuck there and it gets a little bit dirty. So really not a big, huge deal or anything like that, but just something I noticed. I'm not sure if other people feel the same way, but it does feel really good in the dry. So kind of give and take there with that feature. The other buttons, the one on the left side here, that's the power to turn it on, turn it off. That's pretty much all it's used for. And the other two over here. So if we switch the page here, right now I'm on the live display feed. I'll switch the page. This is the normal display. I'm doing zero watts because I'm not pedaling at all so you guys can actually hear me. Uh, that guy's going pretty fast though. Anyway, if I start pedaling, you'll see my watts are actually going up right there. And if you want to see more information, like it might be hard for you to see when you go hard, you just want to see your watts, just zoom in and you can get the information that you want to see. The other great thing I really like about this computer is just the fast, easy to use interface. So you can easily switch menus really fast, see the data that you want to see. You don't have to wait. I noticed on my old Garmin, there was sometimes a big delay in between seeing the data I wanted to see and switching pages. So one huge improvement there. All right, it's probably best if I stop and finish the review while not riding. It's starting to get a little bit windy. And here we are, we're right along the Shonai River. Really beautiful view right here. Check out that gorgeous sunset of the river. And man, that would be a cool place to live in those apartments over there. We're crossing the bridge over here. We're gonna switch over to a different river, the Yada River. That's how I get home. Uh, I made a video with my full commute. So if you're interested, you can go check it out. And <laughs> another interesting thing here, uh, emergency button. You can push that if you're in trouble. But yeah, overall loving this little guy. Let's take a quick look at some of the other menu items. So this is again, completely programmable. You can change this to however you want. I'm pretty much on the default settings right now. I haven't really changed anything. There are some things I think I want to change from the default settings. Like I can't see my current elevation. I can't see my cadence. Those are some fields that I'd like to see. So right now the default setting on the max menu display, we've got Watts, current speed, total distance, ride time, current time, heart rate, uh, kilojoules, TSS and average watts. We can change these and if we zoom in, we can see the top few items getting bigger. And if you just want to see your watts, you can go ahead and you can see that in nice big numbers, which is good when you're doing kind of interval work. And if we change pages, let's take a look at some of the other pages. So here's another one. This is the climbing profile. So here you can see your elevation gain. I'm on a river path right now. So there's pretty much no elevation gain right here, but pretty cool to see when you're out climbing on the mountains and stuff. It of course shows your total distance climbed. And interestingly, also the amount of descending that you've done, the current grade, current speed and current Watts. Again, all pretty cool stuff, but I want to see my current elevation. So kind of surprised that's not a default setting. Changing page again, we've got the map. I really like this map. It's really interesting. It's really easy to use. The Garmin map, I hate it. You have to hit like enter, hit zoom, set custom zoom, and it just takes forever to do. But the Wahoo, it just works. Hit these buttons on the side. You can zoom in, zoom out instantly. And the other great thing is when you zoom out, you only see the bigger roads, which is exactly what I want to see. On the Garmin, it's showing every single road. And once you zoom out like that, it just looks like a thousand different roads all congested together and you can't see anything where you're going. But this way you can actually see where you are in relation to stuff. So if you're doing a long, big cycling tour, you can see exactly where you're going. Again, I live in Japan, so everything here is listed in Japanese, interestingly, even though I have my language setting in English. So that might be a problem if you're a country and you don't read the language. I'm not sure if there's a way to fix that, but that might be something that would be needing fixing for English only users. Anyway, love the maps. 
This is another interesting menu. So it shows you the segments that you've completed. You can see how your time is versus your PR. So my current time, my PR, I was over a minute down. So that's interesting. You can see exactly how you're doing during the ride. So if you've done more segments, more will show up here. And those are pretty much it for the main menus. So overall, really happy with this guy, really happy to finally upgrade and get a new cycling computer. The new longer battery life is great. I can use this thing for a couple days in a row without having to worry about charging it. And yeah, it's really great overall, super happy with it. And I'm excited to test it out some more, get some more miles on it or get some more kilometers on it, I should say. And if you have any advice on settings that I should change, settings that are working for you and your setup, let me know down in the comment section. Anyway guys, that's it for today. As always, thanks for watching. If you like this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up. It really helps the channel. If you're interested in helping support this channel, go check out our Patreon page. And of course, a big thanks to all of our patrons. We'll see you guys in the next video. Right on.